You start off in the corporate world a little bit, and then you got into venture, uh, Gabriel and Ventures, right? Uh, and I think that's kind of like where your career started to take off. I mean, very smart guy, but let, let's kind of walk through, give some context of your background and you know where you're Yeah, going. sure. Uh, so, uh, started off as an engineer undergrad uh, and uh, here at Cooper Union in New York City um, and uh, was thought I was going to become an engineer as my career path. Top of your class. As, uh, as, life, as life would have it, I sat in an entrepreneurship class uh, my sophomore year and just like totally got interested in startups and was fortunate enough to get paired, uh, I was sent to a startup as an intern uh, that summer and just had <laughs> such an amazing time. It literally, like my life just pivoted, you know, 180 degrees. Um, and I, and I, I ended up going back full time, and, and that's what brought me out to, to California. Uh, worked at two startups before joining uh, Gabriel. Uh, first one was very successful. Uh, I had everything to do with it. Uh, 1999, 2000 boom had absolutely nothing to do with our success at all. Um, no, I, I, I was very fortunate to join at a, at a lucky time, and then the second startup in 2002. I rode the dot com boom up, and then the dot com boom down, which I'm sure some of you guys remember. Um, and I wanted to kind of better understand and have more perspective, and, and so I joined Gabriel as, uh, as an analyst, as an entry-level VC, and, and, and uh, kind of, you know, ended up staying in and out of venture, doing a couple things in between, uh, but was in, in, at Gabriel for, for about three years, uh, wanted to do my MBA, went to MIT. Um, Not bad school. It was fun, it was yeah. fun. Um, and uh, worked at IC for a couple of years after that, uh, doing corporate strategy and M&A. Uh, was fortunate enough to kind of come back to my hometown here in New York um, at the kind of what I felt like was the beginning of the startup kind of renaissance here. I know there was a lot of activity during the like dot com boom and Silicon Alley. Um, for a long time, this I think for a lot of people felt like a really difficult place to build a startup company. Um, and in and, and 2008, I came down here, joined IC, and it was really felt like the beginning of a very exciting ecosystem. There would be like an event like this like twice a year with maybe half the number of people and you'd have like the entire startup ecosystem uh, in it. Um, I was doing a lot of different uh, things around corporate strategy and partnerships um, and had the opportunity to, to co-found uh, Highline Venture Partners with uh, Shanna Fisher, um, backed by IEC and, and, and was sort of like, again, I don't know if it was luck or, or kismet or whatever, um, but doing seed investing and did that for two years uh, before leaving to join uh, BDMI where I am now for eight. Yeah, and you were, you were with all these companies with a lot of investment firms. I mean, you have any mentors that stood out to you? Anyone that, I mean, you were around the best. I mean, you're investing in a lot of great companies. You're working with a lot of people who are investing in them as well. Uh, anyone, any partners or anything like that that stood out to you that you, you know, learned from and took with you? Today? Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, I, I mean, uh, I, you know, in some ways, it's going to be a cheesy answer. Some of the most influential mentors for me have been the entrepreneurs I've worked with. Because, um, you know, especially when you're a young VC, you know, you, you often have 10 or 15 or 20 years less experience than the people that you're investing in. Um, and, and so I think it's important to kind of like, especially the early, you know, first board meetings I would go to, you spend a lot of time listening and, and you're like, oh, that's how like a sales plan works or that's how like accounting gets done or bills get paid or companies get formed. Like just sort of basic business stuff that like people just learn over 20 or 30 years as an operator that, you know, when you're three years out of college and never really had like a real job, you have no idea what you're doing, right? So, you, a lot of, frankly, a lot of the, the people that I learned from first and foremost were, were, the, were the founders that, that you know I kind of got to observe and, and, and work with in, in those firms. Um, but at Gabriel, uh, I worked a lot with uh, Tim Chang and Amin Chato, both at Mayfield, mm -hmm. um, and both amazing people. It was actually fun to see them get back together. They left at Gabriel at different times and then re reformed like 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 mini Avengers uh, and have done amazing things. Um, Shan has obviously been fantastic. Um, I had a great mentor uh, very early on uh, in my career. Actually, the reason I went out to the startup world um, was the founder of that first startup company. Um, he had been an alum and just kind of took an interest in me. Uh, taking a company public worth, uh, you know, probably over $100 million, um, you know, humble kid from the Bronx that was just successful. And uh, this guy, literally president and founder of a public technology company, spending time with a 19-year-old kid, uh, explaining how the telecom industry works, right? It's like, you, you can't, like, I, I could never have expected, like, having access to those kinds of people. And who was that? Uh, Howard, Howard Flagg. What was his superpower that you think that made him successful, that you took a little bit of peace from? I, gosh, I wish I had learned more uh, from him. He, he, he passed away, unfortunately, too, too young. But he um, was an incredible listener. So, you know, going to, um, 
you know, a lot of uh, engineering and science oriented schools growing up, you sort of meet a lot of, you know, introverted kind of nerdy people that have, you know, trouble with social skills as, as many, uh, many people in the tech world are stereotyped to have. Um, and, and he was just this great, you know, high EQ person that, you know, and I don't know if it was his nature or just a learned skill uh, through his career, but he was just an incredible listener. He was incredibly curious. Again, it floored me that this person who had, had so much success in life would have a conversation like this, and, 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 and he'd be completely and utterly interested in learning something from you. And, and it was like, what am I going to teach this guy, right? Uh, but he just could connect with people in that way. It was amazing. It's great. As, as you worked at your way at BDMI, let's, let's talk about when you jumped into the, the fund and how you started. And, but, I mean, really what the fund is right now. It's yeah. two funds. And, I mean, give us a little bit of background. Sure. You're investing in the media companies, in the tech, tech world, everything that's going on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and I'll give a little bit of context if it's, sure. if it's helpful. Um, you know, so there's different kinds of venture capital funds uh, out there. Most venture funds are, uh, you know, pure financial vehicles, they'll raise a pool of capital from limited partners, they'll form a partnership, and they'll deploy capital um, as sort of investment companies on a standalone basis. Um, our fund is a little bit different, so we're a corporate venture fund, um, and so we're investing off the balance sheet of a global multinational company called Bertelsmann. Um, they're very creative with names, so we're Bertelsmann Digital Media Investments, um, and uh, we're actually one of four venture funds. We've got sister funds in India, China, and Brazil as well. Um, and so, you know, what, we actually operate much the same as any other VC fund, but what makes us different is access to, to the global platform of our parent company. Um, and so our goal really isn't just uh, leveraging the dollars that we're investing in, but also the network of people that we know through, through Bertelsmann, our access to different people in the industry. Um, and for those who don't know, Bertelsmann is, is a, is a German-based company, so uh, a, a lot of folks in the U.S. are not as familiar with it, uh, but we own uh, Penguin Random House, which is headquartered uh, up, up Broadway here. Um, and we work out of that building. We also are one of the largest TV broadcasters in Europe with RTL. Um, we have a BMG, formerly Bros. Music, yeah. Music Group. We have a big uh, services company called Arvato. We have a big education uh, division. Uh, we have a company called Gruner Yar, which is in the magazine space. Um, have I forgotten anything, Brendan? What did my colleague over there? You used to be part of uh, Sony too, right? I mean. Yeah, so, so well, old, old BMG was actually merged with, with Sony mm -hmm. as a joint venture. Uh, in the early 2000s, and then that uh, that business ultimately became part of Sony. Um, what ended up happening was that the, there was sort of a stub of rights management businesses that BMG retained, and then we actually grew that back up as a as a. It's a little bit different. We do have recorded music now, but most of BMG is actually um, managing the the copyright portfolios of, of songwriters. Right. So you're invested in over 400 companies across the globe. Uh, across all the, the world. All the yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. Let's talk about a little bit about the companies you're investing in, uh, founders who are looking to invest in, and maybe some of the characteristics you see in a, a, a founder or somebody starting a company that you like to work with. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and sorry, you asked about the two funds, just to clarify. Yeah. So we, we, we're an early stage investor. Most of what we do is Series A, one to five million dollar checks. Um, after I joined uh, in 2012, we wanted to create a, a, an early early stage investment vehicle, which we call our seed fund, which is sort of hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollar checks. Um, and our approach with the two funds is, is, is somewhat different. Uh, in the former, where we're writing larger checks, we look to lead or co-lead. We'll spend a lot of time getting to know the team and diligencing the opportunity. Um, and you know, usually take a board seat or a board observer seat. Um, at the seat stage, we're a little bit more passive, so we view it as an opportunity to build a relationship with the founder. Um, but typically, those are led by another fund, like an institutional seat fund. Um, to answer your other question about what we're looking for in founders, I'd say we're, we're um, you know, probably first, of, we're, we're, we're first taking kind of a market and sector lens. Um, so our first filter is typically um, areas that we're excited about, places that we think we can add value. Um, so obviously things that are closer and near and dear to media is one area. Um, we're spending some time in FinTech as well. Um, we're looking at kind of the intersection of content and AI and synthetic media. Um, audio is a pretty exciting area. So generally speaking, and, and I think this is true for a lot of funds, you know, while we try to take a, a relatively broad approach, there's always like four or five different sectors at any given time that we might be more interested in and some things that we might be less interested in depending on where we think there's opportunity. Sure.